Okay, guys, this is Eric Weingartner with Weingartner Racing. You are in for a fantastic video. Uh, at least I think it will be. Uh, yeah, this is going to be cool. Uh, let me describe what's going to happen. I have a head here. This is my Dragon Slayer 255 standard with the wing. Um, the small block Chevy stuff, of course. The wing is in the floor right there. This head's a really good head. It's got a 214 intake valve of a 1560 exhaust valve. And the float numbers are right there. So it moves about 353 CFM. Really good stuff on the Superflow 4155 bore. Now that was with the clay entry. Today what we're going to do is we're going to be flowing all these intakes to see what happens. How the numbers change. And yeah, there's a bunch. And so this is kind of cool. Now, part of the reason for wanting to do this is I, I just hooked up the swirl meter um, around Christmas. That's what this thing is here. There's a blade in here that's underneath this. And as the air goes through the port, turns the swirl, it turns the blade and they were to measure the, how much swirl it has and the direction, of course. Uh, it's just one more piece of information. In a later video, I'll talk more about it, but um, I'm curious to see what it does. But here's what's gonna happen today. I have a whole bunch of manifolds, which I'm gonna go over in just a second. And I'm gonna attach them to the head and I'm gonna flow them with the head to see how much air is lost um, by doing that. So, um, or gained, and we'll see. So let's get started. This first one of the manifolds, this is the one that's actually, this is this is for a customer, by the way. This is actually going on it. This isn't going on to be on it that's being sent out. This is an Edelbrock Rock 2892, and as you can tell, I've fully ported it, okay? Now, I've measured the runner length on the runner that's gonna be flowed, which would be this one, on all of them. So on this one, it is, and by the way, this is not actually the runner, it's the other side. I just wrote it here so I'd have a place to write it. 5.56 inches long. So that's how long that runner will be. And if I remember right, it's gonna be this one right here. Okay, now this one's fully ported 2892. None of the rest of the manifolds are ported. So the next manifold that's gonna be poured or uh, flowed is setting this down here real quick. This is a stock 2892. Same manifold, not ported. I'm gonna get to flow that one. I then have a Wilson 4151. Oh, by the way, those measurements are still the same as far as length on this runner. So I haven't, there's no need to repeat that one. This one was, looking back again, 5.56, okay? I'm gonna test this Wilson one. This is 5.625 in length. It's actually, remember, like I said, the other runner, I'm just writing here because it's easy. I'm gonna test this Wilson 4150. Then what I have here, this is a Holly 300-25. It's length measured 5.18. And again, it's actually that runner. I just wrote it here because it's easy. This is a newer Elbrock 2925. There's older designs that have a thicker divider. We're gonna flow with it attached. Its length was 5.43. And then things get a little tricky. By the way, I'll be attaching this carburetor to it to flow it with the carburetor attached. This, by the way, is a quick fuel 950. It was redone by Mark Whittier at, um, sorry, Whittier Lighting Racing Carbs. He does a fantastic job, but this is a 950. It has dual bolt pattern, so it can bolt to a dominator because that's the next one's getting done. Put this out of the way real quick. The next one I'm gonna be flowed with, this is a Super Victor 2970. I'm trying to find the number real quick. It's probably somewhere where I can't see it. I don't know where it's at, but anyway, this is a 2970. It's stock as well. It measured 5.56 inches long. Remember that one again, unported. Then what I have here is a BMP 4500 manifold as well. It's 5.625 inches long and that gives you the idea. Now, when I flow the dominator ones, I have to use a spacer adapter. This is it, just so you can see. This is an HVH four hole that's tapered. And it will sit on top of here and we'll flow it with the carburetor attached. For the 4150 ones, I'm using an HVH four hole regular one because it bolts right up. And that's how it'll be flowed. Now, I can't, just to save myself on some little bit of time because this video is gonna take quite a bit of time to do anyway. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flow it probably in the go, uh, I've already showed you the stock numbers, but I'm gonna show you the four, five, six, seven, and that's probably where I'm gonna cut it off. So if we look here, it flows uh, 343 at seven, and we'll see if they get there. Now, if any of these at all, even my ported one, gets to 343, I'll just keep flowing it higher. 
but I, I don't think that's going to have it to be honest with you so anyway we're going to bolt them on and flow it and see how it works and then i'm going to share the results and we'll also see if any of the swirl numbers change because of the manifold because the way it enters that port may alter that uh, swirl itself unfortunately i don't have the swirl numbers as it was with the clay because this was before i actually had the swirl meter when i flowed this so it is what it is but anyway i'm going to get it all attached and we'll start flowing and let's have some fun here's that 28 9 and 2 that's fully ported just so you get an idea just got done flowing it i'll show you the full flow numbers at the end of the video between four and i actually went all the way to eight uh, but however i also took all the way to peak just to see what it do 320 CFM. So this one's down. Next one up is going to be the stock 2892. Here is the stock 2892. Uh, it flowed a peak of 314 CFM. It's only 6 CFM worse than the ported one, but that doesn't really reveal everything. I know for sure from that to that, it's a pretty big gain. But you can tell by the chart that blue line is the unported one, and you get the difference there. So it looks greater than what it is, but it's about. 10 CFM or so, so it's worth something. Anyway, that one's done. I should point out too, and I didn't break this off, I tape off the bottom of the ports and these ones are blocked off too. So the only air it's really pulling through is from this one. So anyway, this one's done. Next one's up, gonna be the profiler. All right, the profiler is now finished up. It flowed a peak at 285 CFM. And if we go over here to the chart, again, I'll show you all this stuff at the end, the actual raw numbers. See this blue line here? This is the profiler. This would be the non-ported 2892. This is the ported 2892, and this is uh, without an, with the, just a clay entry. So the profiler is all the way down here. Noticeable difference. Anyway, uh, next one up is going to be the Holly 300-25. The Holly Strip Dominator just got finished. It flowed a peak of 289 CFM. Not bad. Let's look at the numbers. How does it compare to the others? Uh, I'll show you the raw numbers again at the end. What you'll see here is this is the dark blue line, which I don't know how well it'll capture on the screen, but this dark blue line right here is the Holly 325. That's the profiler, stock 2892, port 2892, and the head without that. So there you go. So it's better than the profiler. Not as good as the 2892 by a bunch. All right, next one will be the uh, 2925 Super Victor Manifold. And before I talk about that, let me tell you real quick. There are two designs, same part number. So to see this is 29.25, walk over here. The floor's dirty, my son's supposed to be coming out here to clean it, but uh, he hasn't. This is the 29.25. This is an older version, see how it says 29.25? See how fat the dividers are? Yeah, there's been a change. This happened probably six years ago. Point being is this one's better. So we're gonna go ahead and flow this one next. Here is the Elderbrock 2925, already done. It flowed a peak of 299 CFM, almost 300. Pretty good. Now, I forgot to mention this too. This one actually has been port matched with 1206. So it probably lines up closer to this port because this port on the heads are 1206 as well than some of the others. So what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab that old um, 300, sorry, 2925 that hasn't had any port work done and flow it with it just to see. Because if you look at the numbers, it's line is right there. So profiler, Holly, Elderbrock, Elderbrock, ported Elderbrock. You see how it's kind of in between? I don't want to say that the port match did it, but maybe it did. Um, I know it helps out, contrary to the one commenter on my port match video. Port matching does help. But I don't know if it helped it that much. Chances are this other one's going to fall somewhere in between. But it's the older design, so maybe even not. So um, I might flow that. Let me see if I got enough room here on my screen to get them all in. If you don't see it, then I just didn't have enough room. Okay, if not that one, the next one's gonna start off with our big dogs. The 2970 Dominator Flange Super Victor. If I don't do the Super Victor. Okay, I thought I'd show how it was flowed, just cause I, you think I need a picture, but this is that Super Victor 2970. This is how it looks when it's all flowed. I'm holding the butterfly wide open, by the way, when it's flowing. Anyway, this one, flowed a peak of 306 CFM, so pretty good. If we look at how it compares, it's right there, this blue line here. So it was better than the 2925 port matched, but not as good as the 2892s, either one of them. But um, 
significantly better still than the 325 and the Profiler. So that's where that lies right now. One more to go, the BMP. And sorry about the 2925. I didn't put it in here. And the reason why is, I don't know if this screen will go up high enough to show you, but uh, the cylinders up here, they only give you eight for an option from Performance Trends. And I wanted them all on one chart. Um, so if they give me one more, I could have put it on there. I just couldn't. So sorry about that. You just got what you got. All right, last one, BMP. The BMP is complete to float a peak at 301. I probably should explain what I mean by that. What I did is I floated all the way from 400 to 800. And then once I got to 800, I just lowered this as far as it could go, which is probably like 1.090 lift, way too much. But it just gives you the idea that how much peak flow this thing actually had. Cause it'll, it'll keep going up by a few CFM, but it's almost like taxes or IRS. The more that this port actually flows, the more this intake manifold keeps taking away. So yeah, it pops out a few more numbers, but it's also taking away more numbers. So anyway, let's look at how it compared. And I'm gonna print off the raw number so you can see, and the swirl so you can see if it affected the swirl at all. That blue line, which is probably really hard to see, is right there. This is the BMP. So if you look at it, it's right between, this one right here is the 2925 that's been port matched. Then you have the BMP. Uh, and then I, 29.7, no, I'm way off. Yeah, it's in between, you gotta look here. Yeah, so this is the port match 29.25, BMP 29.70 right there. Then you have the two 2892s. So what I could take away from this, as far as flow-wise goes, the 2892s are better. And I've said this before, I think 2892 is probably the best manifold that they have for a small block Chevy, also the most expensive one. Um, you can convert them to a dominator, so you can make them work that way, but uh, very good numbers still. You can see it's much better. Uh, so, but also you got to pay attention to runner length and different things. But even at that, you saw all the runner lengths. None of them are off more than an inch either way. So I don't know that there's a huge difference there as far as runner length anyway. I'm going to print off the raw numbers so you can see them. And also how maybe it affected the swirl. Because that's the reason part for doing this test is I was curious if the way that the air entered the port would affect the way that the air swirled. And it's just something else to play with. So we're gonna look at those numbers real quick and we'll print out the raw data. Here are the results and there's a lot to handle here. So bear with me. So this is our stock flow numbers in case you're wondering. This is how we all start as you can see. And these are the range from four to 800. And with each manifold, 2892 ported, 2892 stock, profiler, Holly 300-25, Elderbrock 2925, Elderbrock 2970, BMP 4500. Now, with those as well, as comes some other data. Feel free to pause this and look at it if you want. This number right here is a swirl. Now, if you see it says negative, that's because it's uh, swirling counterclockwise. This is the average RPM that this blade turns. And these are giving you values that go with it. By the way, it says 4.16 is 4.155. The computer automatically rounds it up. Um, that's the torque required to spin this thing. They're estimated. So that's what that is. And that swirl coefficient I have not too familiar with yet. The only one I really pay attention to this is the amount of RPMs is actually turning because it gives me an idea. So now that we look at it, of course, the ported 2892 is better than all the rest. And you could tell by the numbers. The interesting part is the swirl though. So if you look at that, I'm just gonna get my pen, so my finger. Uh, if you look at that, it's peak numbers 2931, then it actually switches directions. And I, I don't know why it did that. So I'm not too familiar with that. I don't know what's going on there. I have to go back and revisit that one. I may end up blowing that one again. I wonder if it, I might've accidentally pressed record again whenever I, I think I did what happened is I pressed record whenever I was, so I would ignore that one. I think I pressed record when I was trying to get the peak number and it recorded that. So all these are from four to eight, and this is probably 1.1. .1, so of course there's not a lot of swirl and it changed direction, which by the way, that's kind of interesting. So anyway, pretty much ignore that one. These ones right here are right. I think I messed that part up. That number is correct. Maybe, no, it's not. That number's not correct either. So this one I'm trying to tell you is wrong. Sorry you made it all the way through this to discover that, but yeah, that part's wrong. These ones are correct. I just hit the button at the wrong point. I'm almost positive on that. These ones are all correct. So you can still look at those. So if we look at them though, 247 or 248, so it's worse than that. And then 311, to a, which ignore that one, but from 308, 315. 
same thing and you get the idea of the swirl but if you notice it actually swirls mm, slightly more not ported and then we look at the profiler it does swirl more than the port, port, ported ones or the stock 2892 and even my ported one but its numbers are so low and those are the numbers it's 282 that one by far is the worst one because this is the holly 325 and what's weird is it it does flow slightly more but it also has more swirl you can look at these and analyze it all you want i'm just kind of speaking it out so you can see this is 2925 it swirls more than all the rest or all of them so far and that's what it does this is that Elbrock 2970. Um, yeah, it, what's interesting is it swirls more at 400 lift than the others. So it does affect it. I mean, look at it, 2600, 2655. I mean, those are about the same, but still more than those at 400. And it flows 303 8. And this is the BMP, which if you look at it, now that one, talk about strange. The highest numbers recorded are from this one. Looks 2,700 um, on swirl. None of the rest are even near that at 400. It has the most swirl, which is, it's kind of how that angle comes in. Maybe the angle coming in causes the air to move more in the swirl path. Maybe that also causes a decrease in CFM. Uh, and that's what it is. Now, if you were watching the other part of the video, the rest of the video, you saw me, I was talking about peak numbers. Those aren't on here. And that's why I think I messed up that. I accidentally pressed peak before it was. Or I don't know. I messed that one up. I could tell you that number's are wrong. The rest are all correct. So these are just from four to eight. The peak number I wrote in the manifold just for you to see. Anyway, feel free to pause this, look at it, take whatever you can from it. I am for sure going to analyze more of it. I am a bit strange that the BMP has more swirl. It's such a weird manifold. There was a test done a long time ago that Chris Cobb did, and he compared one of these two that I had sent him. And I've talked about it before, but it didn't really do that well for that engine. If I remember right, his dyno does record acceleration. It had great acceleration, but as far as peak, the only one that it beat was the Profiler. It didn't beat the others. The one that actually did pretty good was the 2892 and the 2925. So the only one there that I would like to have tested would have been the Holly 300-110. I just didn't have it here. Anyway. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you get something out of it. Lord knows I gave you enough data and it took long enough to do. Um, you guys take care.